is available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. Having moved to his West Texas home not even half a year ago, a 28-year-old viewer who I'll refer to as John sent me this voicemail that he received in August of 2021 from an unknown number. John was going about his night when his cell phone began to ring, and on the screen it said no caller ID. This is rather unusual, as for anybody to come up on someone's phone as no caller ID means they went out of their way to intentionally hide their number. Often doctors will do this to keep their privacy from their patients, but other than this and a few other professional circumstances, this is usually at least a slight red flag. John let the call go to voicemail, not wanting to potentially get stuck on the phone with somebody he didn't want to be talking to. This was the voicemail he received. Uh, hey, I'm not, I'm not at your house. I found your info online and I could really use a job. Uh, uh, could, could you open the door? The message was short but direct. John immediately thought it was a joke or that they had the wrong number, but naturally he was curious. Either way, he knew he didn't want to open the front door, especially if someone was actually out there. But the man saying that John found his info online made him open up Google and search his own name. The second result on Google led to an online corporation database that listed all of John's public info, including his first and last name, phone number, and new home address. John is self-employed, but for the purpose of tax benefits, he started an S-corporation in his name, literally with his name in the title of the business. This means his S-corp, along with his name, would eventually be listed on numerous online corporate database websites. Coming to this realization, the voicemail suddenly seemed more legitimate. John went downstairs and inched closer to the front door, trying to be quiet. Someone started to bang on the front door, and a voice from the other side was saying something but his voice was muffled. John ignored the knocking until it stopped, but seconds later his phone vibrated again as he received a call, again with a no caller ID message. He ignored it again, incredibly scared. Another voicemail was left, this time there was no talking in it though. The knocking on the front door stopped, but moments later, a knocking from the back door ensued. He took out his phone and started to record again. As he turned on the lights, revealing the silhouette on the other side, the situation became even more real for John. The guy called one more time, and Joe picked up, saying I have a gun and I already called the police. The man on the other end claimed he was just looking for work, and he apologized and hung up. Then the knocking ceased. John contacted the websites displaying his personal information the next day, but they refused to remove the info. So he went through the process of changing his business name to no longer include his actual name. It's very unlikely anybody who's knocking on both your front and back door late at night and calling your number anonymously is there just looking for a job. If John opened the door, this probably would have had a much different outcome. This was the voicemail received by the girlfriend of viewer Alex Azari. Alex's girlfriend reached out to him right after hearing it for the first time to get his opinion on it since his name could slightly be heard in there, to which all he could offer was equal confusion and concern. He assumed it was one of his friends pranking him at first, but after reaching out to all of his friends, they all claimed it wasn't them, and each of them thought it was equally creepy. Uh, <laughs> I'm trusting the girlfriend. Alex had no outgoing calls, and the person specifically called his girlfriend while mentioning his name, so somehow they must have gotten both of their contact info. Alex and his girlfriend live in different states, and very few people in his life have her number. The voicemail itself is very hard to understand. In the beginning, it sounds like there may be a second person in the background, but it's all very muffled. You can, however, clearly hear that someone is crying into the phone. <laughs> I'm 
I'm trusting the government. At this point, it sounds as though someone is speaking, though it's very difficult to understand. It sounds like they're saying, I'm trapped in the dark, although it could be something else. At first, Alex was unsure if this was just a prank, a hacker, or something else. But after receiving this voicemail, Alex claims a number of strange occurrences happened in his house that same day and the following. First, a door upstairs slammed shut randomly while everyone in the house was downstairs eating dinner. Upon inspecting the bedroom, nobody was inside. Alex and his brother also apparently heard what sounded like footsteps coming up the stairs when they were home alone. At first, they considered the possibility it may have been one of their two dogs, until checking and remembering they had a dog gate standing at the bottom of the stairs, preventing them from coming up the stairs. Each time they looked around the hole upstairs and checked the stairway, they couldn't find anyone. The footsteps also didn't sound like those of a dog. They were reportedly heavier and more spaced out, like a person's footsteps. With this happening the same day and one day after receiving this concerning unexplainable voicemail, Alex believes the occurrences may all be linked. In this video you're about to watch, a couple briefly documents they're listening to two creepy voicemails received on the husband's phone. Hey Ben, how are you? How you doing? Good. Ready for the big trip? Ready for the big trip. Okay, that sounds good. They had been receiving strange voicemails for weeks already, both on their cell phones and on the landline. In this video though, the man's phone doesn't even ring. He just gets two straight to voicemail notifications, no phone number or any contact details attached to the voicemail. I was just sitting where you were, uh -huh. and my voicemail just went off, no ringing, nothing, it just, like and that, that like yeah. last Tuesday, that was about, it was about a five minute voicemail on the Okay, phone so that's phone, what your mother offered too, right? Yeah. I called out of so the couple inquired about the calls from the phone company as well, both before and after this video. However, they did not have any records of the audio message being received. The couple described the voicemails as sounding like somebody was being tortured, or some kind of creature was screaming into the phone. The couple would also hear strange sounds in the house at night for a week, such as cabinets closing from the kitchen. They believed that what they were dealing with was supernatural. In February of 2021, 30-year-old Martha Ramirez woke up on a Saturday morning with a notification on her iPhone that said voicemail from an unknown number. Upon listening to it, this is what she heard. Martha. 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 The voice you just heard in the voicemail was of Martha's father. This caused her a great deal of confusion and horror. But why? Why was this even remotely concerning? Well, Martha lost her dad to cancer in 2019. At the time this voicemail was left, he had been dead for almost two years. She listened to the voicemail over and over, trying to think of any other possible person it could be. But she knew her dad's voice. She knew the way her dad's voice sounded saying her name. She tried to think back to if her dad had ever left a voicemail simply repeating her name multiple times, but she couldn't remember a single instance. Even if she could, that wouldn't explain randomly receiving a voicemail of her father's voice years later. She called their service provider, but they were not able to trace anonymous calls. She asked her entire family if any of them were playing a messed up joke, but when she sent all of them the voicemail, they were all equally disturbed. She claimed she was never a religious person at all, nor is she a believer in the supernatural, but she also doesn't believe this was the work of anybody she knew, or any kind of glitch. 
She says she actually believes this was her dad's voice contacting her, and it terrifies her deeply. This last voicemail was posted to Reddit three years ago. Part of the Reddit post read, To make a long story short, my significant other got a new phone. For the first time, she has visual voicemail. A family member left her a voicemail today, and when checking it, discovered she had several missed voicemails. She started going through the voicemails. Typical stuff, family, bill collectors. But one voicemail dated Friday, June 9th, 2017 at 4.38 p.m. was from a number we do not know. What you just heard was just a small clip from the original three minute long audio, which seems to have been removed from the internet without a trace. In this small audio clip though, it sounds like the girl on the other end is saying please help me, and even they have my baby. The rest of the reddit post read, it's three minutes long, and the area code is 480, placing the owner around the Phoenix, Arizona Valley. I've spent all day researching news where their incidents happened the afternoon of June 9th, 2017, and have exhausted my very limited abilities in researching. None of our family members or friends recognize the number either. The voicemail was dated almost a year ago and was not discovered until today. I will be contacting Phoenix police to provide them with the audio, timestamp, and phone number. I star 67 the number, it went straight to voicemail. Significant other has had the same phone number for 10 years. Based on a lot of the original replies to the thread, the original audio was so horrific that many couldn't even get through it all. Still, some people believe it to be a hoax. Either way, this voicemail and whoever was behind it still remain a mystery.